What's up guys, good evening. Welcome to the Easy E Show. I'm Easy E. I'll be your host for the show. This is our first ever episode. This is our inaugural episode. And uh, well, we're gonna do this thing and see how it goes. The way we start our show is always gonna be with sports. We're gonna do four 15 minute segments. It's gonna be an hour long show. Uh, but we're always gonna start with sports. That'll be our first segment of the day today. And we're gonna just go ahead and get right into it. Okay guys? So the first part of the show is gonna be the Miami Dolphins. Right, let's talk, we gotta talk about Miami Dolphins. You see the gear, you know, we're in the 305. So we gotta talk to Miami Dolphins. So the Dolphins started off their season 4-1. Um, they're on an historical record pace. Tyree Kill has 641 receiving yards. He's averaging 18 yards per reception. Right, five touchdowns, ridiculous. I think he said his goal for the year was 2,000 receiving yards, ridiculous. Let's go, Tyreek. We got your back, baby. The 305 is with you. Tua Tagovailoa has 11 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, 1,600 passing yards. But, guys, his passer rating is 111.9 QBR. That's probably the top in the league. He hit the best of his career. If you look at his stats throughout his career, he's always gotten better in the QBR. It's the best he's ever done. So, they're killing it right now, 4 1 record. And let's not forget about Devon A. Chain. The rookie running back out of Texas A&M, even though the U, you know, we kind of put a little whoop into him, but it's all right. <laughs> uh, Devon A. Chain playing incredible football. He's got 38 carries, 460 yards. He's averaging as a running back, rookie running back in the NFL, 12.1 yards per carry. That's ridiculous numbers. Five touchdowns. He's got nine receptions on the year. I don't think he's going to play this weekend. I think he's hurt. This weekend, he's gonna take the weekend off. He's not gonna play, and I think we just got Jeff Wilson back uh, uh, off of the injury uh, report, off of IR. So I think it's gonna be a combination of Mostert, Ahmed, and Wilson this weekend. Um, I, f I forget right now who we're playing. I think we are playing at home. I just can't remember the team we're playing this weekend. So, Carolina. Carolina. Carolina Panthers, right. So you know we are gonna get that done. So we good. All right, so now next we're going to talk about in the sports section, guys, we're going to talk about the University of Miami. They're also uh, started off to a 4-1 record. They just got their first loss last week against Georgia Tech. Crazy stuff happened. They were losing. They came back. They were winning. It was 20-17, to 17, under two minutes. Um, uh, I think it was um, Perry that uh, fumbled the ball with 26 seconds left on the clock. But then you look at the stills on Twitter, it doesn't look like he fumbled the ball. Clearly his elbow was down um, before the guy ripped the ball out. So it should not have been a fumble. Regardless, Georgia Tech got the ball back. Their quarterback was playing pretty good all day. Uh, guy made two throws. We lost the game. Mario Cristobal should have definitely called timeout. He had, he had timeouts. He could have definitely called timeout. Slowed the game down. Got a better uh, defensive uh, play. And uh, maybe it would have been a different result. But ultimately we lost that game. Regardless, we're playing really good. Tyler Van Dyke, 1,330 passing yards, 12 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, 84.5 QBR, doing really, really well. Uh, my pick for most improved player of the year was going to, I picked two guys. I picked uh, Jacoby, uh, Jacoby Young, uh, which is doing really, uh, doing really good. Kobe Young is doing really good. Uh, wide receiver number four. And um, Jakari Brown. So Jakari is not doing really good. He actually got passed up by the rookie uh, by the by the rookie Amari or whatever his name is. But they're doing good. So I'm proud of the University of Miami. It's all about the U. Coach Cristobal, keep coaching, brother. Keep doing your thing. All right. So next to sports, guys, we're gonna talk real quick about the Miami Heat. They just got. They're still in preseason. Preseason is doing good. Uh, I really like the addition of Thomas Bryant and Josh Richardson for depth. Uh, on our second on our second rotation, uh, that's going to be good. Josh Richardson played with us coming up, went away, came back, going to do really well for us. Thomas Bryan has bounced around the league a little bit, but uh, he's going to give us some size and presence in the middle um, with some of the rookie guys that we got last year. The guy that we got uh, we drafted this year, Joaquin, he looks pretty decent, not bad, playing pretty good. I like it. So uh, I'm excited. To see what they, he got for us. You know, Jimmy's a little emotional. But it's all right, we'll see what happens to Jimmy. I love you, guy. So, you know, we got the Jimmy right here. We got the Jimmy right here. Hold on, Jimmy, I love you. We got the Jimmy right here. So, Jimmy, ball out for us, brother. We got your back no matter what. The 305 is with you, kid. Uh, Florida Panthers, guys, they started off their season pretty rough. They had a great year last year. Actually, two years in a row, Florida Panthers. I don't know if people pay attention to hockey. I pay attention to hockey a little bit. 
They got two great years, um, one and four this year. You know, not good, no bueno, but we'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, I got your back, guys. We're going to go sit over there, those beautiful seats at that beautiful stadium that you guys fixed up. So we're going to go check out the Florida Panthers as well. Finally, guys, in the sports, let's talk Miami Marlins. We made the playoffs after 20 years. <laughs> Jesus Christ, thank God we made the playoffs after 20 years. Um, you know, we got this, this young kid, Luis Araiz, uh, two, two time uh, battle title winner. Uh, only two players in history, him and another guy uh, that won the batting title in the American League and the National League. So that's dope. Um, and obviously the pitching was pretty good. Sandy, Sandy can pitch. So guys, I'm really excited what we got in the 305 and the sports community down here, what's happening. Uh, you see my guy right here. That's the NFT from Miami Millionaires Club with my boy Malik Rogier. Shout out to him. Um, and we're going to make it happen, guys. So thank you for tuning in to the sports segment. We're going to keep the show going. Next topic we're going to talk about is going to be business. So stick around. All right, guys. So uh, we're in the next segment now. Again, welcome to the Easy E Show. I'm Easy E. I'm your host. Uh, we're going to get into business and entrepreneurship now. All right. And I really like this segment, um, particularly because I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a, I'm a businessman. And that's the way not only I provide for my life, but it's also a part of my mission statement for my business. So, so one of my goals is to uh, develop the millennial entrepreneur and really teach young people the basics to being an entrepreneur, starting your business, the benefits, um, whether you're making money or not making money, but regardless how that works and what, how that benefits you to really start your business. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about business and entrepreneurship right here on the Easy E Show. Let's get it. All right, so now first, let's talk about how important it is to actually start your business, right? And specifically an LLC. Uh, LLC stands for Limited Liability Company. And basically, it's just a better way for you as an entrepreneur to reduce your risk um, from lawsuits and you know, risk from whatever, liability or whatever. So you just, it's a better way for you to reduce your risk. So it's better to go with an LLC when you're starting off and if you're by yourself. You know, sole proprietors, sole people like those, I always prefer LLC, start there. That's the basics. Now, for people in Florida, I want you to know where to actually go to file a business, to file for a business. It's called sunbiz.org, okay? Well, if you live in Florida and you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to start your business in Florida, go to sunbiz.org, that's S-U-N-B-I-Z dot O-R-G, and you'll be able to start your business. Do it. Do it now. I promise you. So I'm going to tell you some benefits, right? So even if you have no product, you have no business, you're not selling anything, just opening your business and, okay, let's say you're a barber, okay, and instead of you getting... Uh, cash all the time or 1099 or whatever to your personal checking account start a business start you know Pepe's barbershop LLC right and allow that business to start conducting business start putting money into the bank account what's gonna happen is you're gonna develop credit Pepe's gonna develop credit the business is gonna develop credit as well you have two avenues as leverage for credit, not only your personal credit, but your business credit as well. That's number one. Number two, the tax advantages. Uh, you'll be able to write off things as a business. Yes, you could do it kind of as an independent contractor uh, or sole proprietor as well, but as an LLC, reduce the risk much better. Write off a lot of those expenses, things like your car note. If you're using your car to go to work, you can write that off. Things like gas. If you use your cell phone, this is basically my number one source to run my business is my mobile device. So I write it off and basically when folks are paying me, they're not paying me, they're paying my business. I have different multitudes, levels of income. So for example, I have Robinhood Logistics on my shirt. This is my logistics company. When I get paid here, they're paying my business. My insurance company, when they pay me commissions, that's going to my business. My business in turn 
because I'm the CEO and I'm an owner operator for the business, so I'm actually operating the business hands on as a CEO, uh, I actually pay myself a W-2. That now is an expense that the business gets to write off and I get to pay back, I get a W-2. What's the benefit of paying myself a W-2 as an entrepreneur? I'm married, I have two kids. So if I want my wife to get social security credits, Medicare credits, retirement credits, I have to pay a W-2 so you can contribute to Medicare, Social Security, that goes towards your retirement. I'm going to talk further about Medicare and Social Security in the politics segment. We're going to talk about money there as well, but that's important. If, you, if, you, if you're a married man, okay, I'm 35 with a wife and two kids, so it's tough to put money in a 401k or an IRA or in a mutual fund. Sometimes that's difficult. It's a little bit easier to pay your Medicare and have some a sense of retirement through your Medicare, your Social Security, because you're just basically following the law and it's a process of retire of saving for retirement. Trust me, you'll thank me later. All right. Now, um, a little more breakdown of what it means to be in business, right? So, for example, real estate agents. Real estate agents, you have your license. Don't. Tell the people to write you your ch the check when you're paying your commission directly to you in, under your name. Okay, open up your firm, you know, Fulanito's real estate firm. Okay, and LLC, and have the people when they're writing you your commission checks pay it to the business. Then have the business in turn pay you a W-2. You don't have to do that part. There's a benefit for it for me. You have to analyze it for yourself. By the way, guys, I'm not a licensed uh, financial advisor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is not financial advice, but I do want you to understand basics, okay? This is basic stuff. Open up a business, double lines of credit, more leverage, gives you easier ways to build credit, better way to write off expenses like gas, and car note, phone, you know, if, uh, if you get a warehouse or an office space or if you're buying printer and ink, and all this stuff for your little for your little a home office space. This is how you can write those things off and receive benefits from it in turn. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about the uh, current current market conditions. All right. Right now, for lack of a better word, shit's tough. <laughs> things are very difficult in the United States of America and globally right now financially money's tight there's not money on the street you talk to the regular entrepreneur at the, at the cafeteria getting on cafecito the guy's telling you dude there's no money on the street I can't get money from there I can't get money from here I'm only on my relying on my basic income etc etc money there's no money on the street so you have to learn how to get money without there being money available right and that's that's a talent it's a talent and there's a trick to it and the trick is called good credit so if you have good credit you will always have access to money okay guys so you fix your credit work on paying your debt down that'll get you access to money that's on the personal side do it through your business at the same time you have double upside double ways to to leverage and find money and get money when things are tough. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about real estate. So my boy that's handling the camera, my boy Brian, he is a real estate agent, shout out to him. If you guys wanna hit him, hit him up, he's gonna have his contact information down in the description. You guys will be able to hit him up to uh, buy or sell a house, okay? He's um, gave me some really good tips that say gave me permission to share with you guys, right Brian? Of course. I have permission to share. So Brian mentioned that Right now, it's a seller's market. It's not a buyer's market, right? So if you're a real estate agent, guys, you need to be working with sellers, okay? You need to be working with sellers. This is how you're gonna be able to you know, sell your one, two, three houses, maybe you got one four or five houses a month, and you're gonna be able to make some money in this economy. Things are tough, people, there's a lot of uncertainty. They said the Fed rate's gonna go up another tick. It's already at 8%, I guess that's not enough gonna go up a little bit more supposedly then it's gonna pause then it's gonna come back down little by little little by little so it's gonna be a while before it changes drastically in any direction okay so the way you play the game for the next three six nine maybe twelve months is sellers market contact your sellers build a network with sellers 
and they will bring you the client that will eliminate some of that extra work. Okay, guys? If you have any questions, put some comments here. Subscribe, like the videos, guys. Welcome to the Easy E Show. I hope you like the content. That's what I got for you on the business side and entrepreneurship. Let me know what else you guys want to hear from me on this, and we'll keep talking, all right? Let's go. Next subject for you guys, by the way, we're going to talk politics, guys. So next subject is politics. If you want to stick around for the whole show, next subject is politics. You guys are really going to like politics with me, okay? We're going to have fun. Thank you. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Welcome back to the Easy E Show. I'm Easy E. I'm your host. All right, so now in this segment, guys, we're going to go ahead and talk politics, and we're actually going to finish it off, and we're going to do both segments right here in one shot, okay? So the last two segments is politics and God, all right? So first starting with politics, okay? Now, the issue with big government and printing money is that government gets bigger. <laughs> so it's pretty simple, very basic, but that's the problem. The more money they print, the bigger the government gets, the more the people need the government, the more the people become dependent on the government, therefore they justify what they're doing. Obviously, uh, being a dad, running a household is very difficult. And if I ran my house the way these politicians run America, not only would I be bankrupt, I'd be homeless, my kids would be homeless, I have no food, and it'd be really bad. But that's probably a lie because I just go apply for Medicaid, apply for all this public housing and all this BS, and the, 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 the communist part of this country would take care of me. So it's good and bad. People need it during tough times to get out of tough times, but people need to understand entrepreneurship is the way, making money is the way, capitalism is the way, that's the way forward, okay? So, the reason the government keeps printing more money, guys, is not to give it to us. It's so they can get bigger and give it to themselves, okay? And I'm gonna give you some numbers to show you what I'm talking about. So, 2023, Social Security budget, meaning what Social Security gets from Congress to give to the people this year, $14 billion, okay? And it's expected to increase 14% next year, all right? So it's gonna go up like another two bill next year, all right? And it's just gonna keep going up and up and up and up and up, okay? That's Social Security, all right? I'm gonna give you Medicare, ready? Medicare, and I, and I love my old people because y'all fought the Great War, so thank you, and I love you. But y'all cost a trillion dollars a year is the budget for Medicare to take care of our senior citizens. That's a lot of money and it's expected to go up by 8% next year, okay? So it's just, again, gonna keep going up, gonna keep inflating um, and sometimes it compounds. It compounds rapidly because large groups of people age into Medicare age out of Social Security, stop paying Social Security, start collecting Social Security. So that flips. So instead of people contributing, now that same individual is receiving, not contributing. Now there, it's a burden on the country and people like Eric and my guy back there got to work harder just to make ends meet. Just to, you know, uh, a McDonald's cost, uh, a McChicken cost like $2, I think almost. It used to be, you know, a dollar, 99 cents. You had a dollar six exactly, you could get a chicken. You know what I'm saying? And I know what that was like. Try that today, guys. They'll tell you you don't have enough money. <laughs> okay? The U.S. military for 2023, our budget this year, is $816 billion. Okay? That's for the U.S. Mili uh, military, and it's going to go up another 3% next year. So, again, if you don't see any of these numbers going down, all of these numbers are going up. Okay? And again, the more they print, the bigger they get. Not the bigger we get. We got to work harder to uh, cover that gap that they're taking. You understand? So we got to feed more people with less of the pie. Does that make sense? That's what we got to do. So total U.S. debt right now, and the ticker's just beep, 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 beep. This 
just going up. Okay, it's 33 trillion dollars, folks. 33 trillion T trillion. That's a lot of money, folks. We, we I mean, it would take you a year to count to a trillion. So try to count, count to 33 trillion. <laughs> okay, so 33 trillion dollars. Um, total budget just for these three things, right? I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about you know all the extra stuff. I'm talking about Social Security, Medicare, and military. I'm not talking about you know Congress wages and what they pay the senators pay themselves, uh, House representatives pay themselves, what they pay their 15 secretaries and advisors that are all making six figures. So I'm not counting even any of that. I'm counting Social Security that goes to the people, that's for the people, by the people, for the people. People pay for it and people get it. Medicare people pay for it, people get it, and the U.S. military because they they protect our freedom. So 1.830 trillion dollars. So one trillion eight hundred and thirty one one trillion eight hundred and thirty billion is what goes to these three things alone this year, going up next year, going up the year after that, going up the year after that, going up the year after that, going up the year after that. Okay, just up, 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 and up. up. Right, so a uh, couple more stats and then I'm gonna get to my point, okay guys? Thank you for your patience. Welcome to the Easy E Show. If you like the content, thumbs up, subscribe, appreciate it. All right? I'm gonna give you some more stuff after this. So Social Security guys will be depleted. You'll have no more money by 2033. Ten years. Social Security goes bye bye. That means if I keep paying Social Security, because I gave you advice, I said earlier I said Pay your bills, follow the law, pay Social Security, pay Medicare, be smart, open up a business, pay yourself a W-2, be smart, that's what entrepreneurs do. And you're following the law, you're not out the poem, breaking the law, you're following the law. So if I keep paying for the next 10 years, for me and my wife to be able to get, to get this when we get older, it could be gone, right? Medicare, Medicare, so not only the people that are in it now, Right, it was the greatest generation ever that fought two wars for us, Vietnam, Cold War as well. They will kaput, no more, bye bye, Medicare, 2032, okay, it will be absolving, meaning they can't pay their bills. So if they can't pay their bills, yes, that means they can go bankrupt. So Social Security, Medicare, both, 2032, 2033, go bye bye, no more money. Yeah, we're giving Ukraine 100 plus billion. You know, we just gave Israel a hundred bi uh, billion dollars. God bless them all. Um, God bless Israel. Do what you got to do over there. But um, they got a billion people in Hawaii, people in in, in, um, in Maui. They, you know, seven hundred dollars per person, right? That's what they got. Seven hundred dollars. American citizens, right? So, what 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 are we doing? Right, so Medicare goes by by, Social Security goes by by, by Maui goes by by, Ohio, the people over there drinking the poison from the train turning over, they go by by. So, point is, guys, the big point with politics is freedom beats communism any day, all day. You know, capitalism is the way to go. Freedom and capitalism, they, they win. Okay, they won the last hundred years, they're gonna win this hundred years. Okay, and I'm a part of this hundred years, by the way. Nice to see. You. All right, and we're gonna finish it, guys, with God. So, Jesus is God. That's that's what you need to know. Jesus is God, his, his salvation, his blood. No, nope, you know, I, I'm not dying on the cross. Nobody else or that we know died on the cross. He died on the cross for us. Okay, guys, so Jesus is God. That's what we need to know. When we live our life with the fear of God, but love of freedom, and you live your life like that, so listen to that. So fear Him, fear God, and love freedom. When you live your life that way, gentlemen and ladies, uh, good things will happen, man. Good things will happen. So thank you for tuning in to the Easy E Show. This does it for our first episode. Our first show is done. It's less than what we less time than what we wanted, but I think we still got all of it out there. I appreciate my guy Brian for recording, for providing me the time. Uh, guys, please look us up, subscribe, like, like, like the videos. You know, join with us every week. We're gonna try to do an episode every week. 
Look us up below. Uh, like I said earlier, Brian does real estate. If you guys want to buy a house, hit him up. His information is going to be below. I do logistics. Uh, I also have an insurance company. Hit me up. And we're going to keep working, man. God bless you. We'll see you in the next one.